you will hear a number of different recordings and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four sections. At the end of the test, you will be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. Now turn to section 1. Section 1 You will hear Tom and Danny, two students, talking with their professor about the assignment. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 6. Professor Tomlinson, may Annie and I please quickly ask you a few questions about the reflective journal assignment? It's just that we're a bit confused as to what you want us to include and discuss. Yes, of course. What are you having trouble with? Well, everything really. To start with, what should be included first in the reflective journal? Perhaps suggestions from others? No, no. Firstly, you should include the study goals you set yourself at the beginning of the module. This section should have been discussed in some detail towards the beginning of the course by Professor May. You should be able to find her suggestions on the slides she has provided the class online. OK, thank you, Professor. Could I also trouble you to take a brief look at my bibliography and footnotes? I feel like they're missing something. Most of our friends' bibliographies are longer. Well. Looking at this, Annie, I can see that you have used a wide range of resources, which shows that you have made effective use of communication technology. As far as I can tell, you need not make any changes to this, although you might want to double-check that your referencing complies with the Harvard Referencing Style regulations. Oh, I'm very surprised you've said that. Thank you. Now I can set my mind at ease. Tom? You said you wanted to ask the professor about the achievement section. Ah, yes, professor. In the assignment guidelines, we are asked to introduce and elaborate on our biggest achievement in the past, saying which skills we learned in the process and how these skills can be transferred to various different future careers. The only problem is that I don't know what my greatest achievement actually is. I've only ever worked as a waiter in a hotel restaurant during the summer holidays from university. If you worked as a waiter in a hotel restaurant, you're bound to have worked with other waiters as part of a team. Would you say that during your time as a waiter, you developed any leadership skills? Yes, well, I suppose I was asked to become the team leader of the food and beverage department, but that's hardly an achievement. You might not think so. But if you write that you were offered the position of the team leader, it shows a lot more about your character. For example, that you're charismatic and work well in a high-pressure situation. I never would have thought to write that down. Thank you. I guess I should start listening to others more often. Annie, do you have any more questions or are you ready to go back to the library? Yeah, I think I've got everything I need. Thank you very much, Professor Tomlinson. That was really helpful. I'm actually starting to look forward to writing this now, and it should be a really useful exercise to prepare us for writing CVs and applying for jobs. It's shocking how bad I am at identifying my strengths and weaknesses. Professor Tomlinson has shown me that I definitely need to start displaying some self-awareness. Yeah, Tom, you really do. You're always so modest. Modesty is great until it comes to applying for jobs. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, 
You have some time to look at questions 7 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 7 to 10. Oh no! I forgot to ask the professor about the section on identifying the skills gained through different activities. Do you remember? When it asks you, for example, whether writing an essay develops your study skills or your independent learning and so on. Oh goodness! We really should have asked him that. I've been having trouble with it, too. It just seems like such a pointless task. What do you reckon the answers are? Mmm, I think writing an essay might be a way of identifying and resolving a problem, because you have to state the problem in the introduction and then solve it. I'm not so sure about taking exams. I thought they were supposed to develop lots of different skill sets. If I really had to choose, I'd say that taking exams enables you to become more confident in yourself. Do you agree? Maybe. I really don't know either. What do you think about the last two? Making class notes and presentation notes? Oh, it's so difficult. I think making class notes has to be a way of becoming a more independent learner, because you yourself decide what the important information is and learn it. That reminds me, I find taking presentation notes is a disaster. The professors speak much too quickly, and I write much too slowly. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section two. Section two. You will hear a woman called Phoebe, who is training to be a teacher, talking to her tutor called Tony about research she has done in a school. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 15. So, how did you get on with your school-based research, Phoebe? Well, it was exhausting, but really valuable. Good. What was the specific focus you chose? My title is Attitudes Towards Study Among 11 to 12-year-old Pupils. Right, and what made you choose that focus? Well, <laughs> that's a bit difficult. Lots of my classmates decided on their focus really early on, mainly on the basis of what they thought would help in their future career, you know, in their first year's teaching. So that's what helped you decide? Actually, it was that I came across a book written by experienced teachers on student attitudes, and that motivated me to go for the topic. OK. So what were your research questions or issues? Well, I wanted to look at the ways students responded to different teachers, particularly focusing on whether very strict teachers made teenagers less motivated. And from your research, did you find that was true? No, not from what I saw, you know, from my five days observation, talking to people and so forth. OK, we'll talk about the actual research methods in a moment, but before that, 
Can you briefly summarise what your most striking findings are? Well, what really amazed me was the significant gender differences. I didn't set out to focus on that, but I found that boys were much more positive about being at school. Girls were more impatient. They talked a lot about wanting to grow up and leave school. Very interesting. Yeah, it is. From doing the research, it was clear to me that you might start out to focus on one thing, but you pick up lots of unexpected insights. Right. Did you get any insights into teaching? Yes, certainly. I was doing a lot of observations of the way kids with very different abilities collaborate on certain tasks, you know, help each other. And I began to realise that the lessons were developing in really unexpected ways. So what conclusion do you draw from that? Well, I know it's necessary for teachers to prepare lessons carefully, but it's great if they also allow lessons to go their own ways. Good point. Now, I'm really pleased to see you doing this. Analysing and drawing conclusions based on data. But surely this isn't proper data. Because it's derived from such small-scale research. Well, as long as you don't make grand claims for your findings, this data is entirely valid. Mm. I like the way you're already stepping back from the experience and thinking about what you've learned about research. Well done. But I know I could have done it better. As you become more experienced, you'll find ways to reduce the risk of difficulties. OK. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. So, let's look in more detail at how you gathered your data. Let's start with lesson observation. Well, it generally went quite smoothly. I chose my focus and designed my checklist. Then teachers allowed me into their classes without any problems, which surprised me. It was afterwards that the gruelling work started. Yeah, it's very time-consuming, isn't it? Making sense of analysing your observation notes. Absolutely. Much more so than interview data, for example. That was relatively easy to process, though I wanted to make sure I used a high-quality recorder to make transcription easier. And I had to wait until one became available. Right. And did you interview some kids as well? In the end, yes. I talked to ten, and they were great. I'd imagined I'd be bored listening to them, but... So it was easy to concentrate? Sure. One of the teachers was a bit worried about the ethics, you know, whether it was right to interview young pupils, and it took a while for him to agree to let me talk to three of the kids in his class, but he relented in the end. Good. What other methods did you use? I experimented with questionnaires, but I really regret that now. I decided to share the work with another student, but we had such different agendas it ended up taking twice as long. That's a shame. It might be worth you reflecting on ways you might improve on that for future projects. You're right, yeah. OK. And the other thing I did was stills photography. I didn't take as many pictures as I'd hoped to. Lack of time? It's pretty easy just snapping away, but I wanted each snap to have a purpose, you know, that would contribute to my research aims, and I found that difficult. Well, that's understandable, but remember... That is the end of Section 2. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 3.
Section 3 You will hear a conversation between a student and her professor talking about a summer course. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 24. Hello, Mr. Thompson. May I speak to you for a minute? Of course. Please come in. I'm Alexandra Jones. I'm studying sustainability here at the university, and I heard about the summer course that you offer every year. I was considering joining the course and wanted to ask you some questions about it. Yes, of course. Please fire away. Has the course been effective in improving the environment? Yes, absolutely. We have seen great results. Last year we planted a small field of trees and we have been measuring their oxygen outputs to see the benefits that they have provided to the environment. Since we were regulated by law last month, we are now able to hugely enhance our efforts. Our current goal is to introduce a lot more tree species to the plot so that we can establish a complex habitat and compare the benefits of each species. In order to do this, we need to get a lot more students involved in the project. So, I am very pleased to hear about your interest. Well, the project sounds fascinating. I would definitely like to be involved. Absolutely. Over the years, we have received funding from private investors and from selling shares. But the biggest improvement in our research came from a government fund that we received in the first year. This has greatly improved the organisation and we have since won prizes for our research. Wow, how impressive! Yes, it is of the utmost importance to our organisation that we find a way to repair the terrible damage that has been done to the environment by the human species. This is no small undertaking, and our resources still need management, but from reports taken of our studies, we have found that teachers and students have greatly benefited from field trips to the tree plantation. Yes, I visited the plantation myself on a field trip two years ago, and I found myself greatly impressed by it. We have received a lot of feedback from visiting groups, telling us how impressed teachers researchers and students alike have been during their visits. Due to the educational facilities that we have carefully structured, I know that the visits are useful and engaging for students and that their experience is particularly special. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 25 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 25 to 30. So what is the particular focus of the organisation and the reports that it provides? I am personally very interested in soil erosion, so I knew that I definitely wanted to focus some of the report on this area. Before I set up the organisation, I looked up information on what areas were currently being researched and I found that there were already studies into air pollution and water pollution. I obviously wanted to find a unique area to research, and so these were no good. I was tempted to look into the background of overgrazing, but the impacts of forest exploitation are far more devastating, and very little research has been carried out on this subject. So I decided that this should also form some focus for the report. Yes, that makes sense. 
What have you found to be the greatest benefits of the activities carried out by the organization? I have found that the greatest benefits are not the ones that anyone can learn from a book, like how to collect data, but more importantly, are life lessons that one can gain only from experience. Students who have partaken in the summer course have massively enhanced their confidence, which will prove invaluable for the rest of their lifetime. The people who partake in the summer course already know the importance of environmental protection, so it is not important that we spend time teaching them this. Students instead benefit from learning the importance of punctuality, as each day they have to wake up early to make sure that they are not late for their practical experience sessions. If I decide to attend the summer course, what will I be doing for the rest of the time when no activities are going on? Well, we unfortunately don't yet have a library on site, so you would be unable to read reference books, although you are obviously welcome to bring some books of your own with you. We offer a range of fun hobbies, such as games and painting, for students to participate in outside of their classes, so you could participate in one of these activities. We do not offer tutorials outside of the scheduled classes, However, you are free to interview teachers and ask them any questions you may have about the research. Well, the course sounds fantastic. I would definitely like to participate during the summer. Thank you so much for your help. No problem at all. Here is a form with all of the details. I look forward to seeing you there. That is the end of Section 3. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 4. Section 4. You will hear part of a talk about an Australian wild zoo given by a tour guide. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Good morning everybody and welcome to the Australian Wild Zoo. I would like to start by introducing you to the new features that we have added to our zoo in the recent renovation. Being the only zoo in the area, we receive thousands of visitors a year. We found that this huge footfall was too demanding for the facilities that we were able to provide. And so we decided to expand ourselves in order to give every visitor a brilliant and exciting experience. We initially intended to build a new dog walking area. However, we felt that the zoo should cater only to exotic animals. During our previous renovation, we expanded the exhibition center. And so we felt that this time the zoo would benefit most from introducing a new batch of animals, so visitors can now see a whole range of new additions at the Australian Wild Zoo, including lions and bears. With this huge improvement to our facilities, we also found it necessary to change our regulations, which we put into action in June. We now allow visitors access to the zoo during weekdays, and as some of our newly added animals are nocturnal, Guests may also now visit the animals late at night. Unfortunately, some visitors had started feeding the animals 
during these late night viewing times, which disrupted their feeding pattern, and as a result, we had to ban food in the viewing areas. One of our most exciting additions to the zoo is our native kangaroo, who we have named Frisbee. For a fee of just $5, visitors can have their photo taken with him and have it printed onto a selection of items such as key rings and mugs. At first, visitors were also allowed to feed Frisbee items that we provided, such as carrots and leaves. However, some guests started feeding him hamburgers and chips, so we were forced to forbid visitors from feeding him. As kangaroos are such calm animals, Frisbee isn't disturbed by the noises and shouting of visitors at the zoo, which has helped him to settle in at his new home very quickly. The Pie Dog Zone has been permanently closed throughout the winter period to allow the dogs to hibernate as they would in their natural habitat. We were very excited to be reopening the zone. However, unfortunately, we have been forced to close it temporarily as the result of a broken fence, which will take about one week to fix. We were intending to renovate the zone with the other construction that we were undertaking, but unfortunately, we did not have sufficient funds. We understand that this temporary closure may disappoint our visitors and so we have decided to offer a discounted price on our tickets for the next week. If you ask at the reception desk, they will happily direct you to the photo shop where you can purchase the ticket. The ticket will also entitle you to a 10% discount off any item in our gift shop, where we sell a range of items including postcards and fluffy toys. Uh, come in, Russ. Thank you. Now, you wanted to consult me about your class presentation on nanotechnology. You were due to give it next week, aren't you? That's right, and I'm really struggling. I chose the topic because I didn't know much about it and wanted to learn more, but now I've read so much about it, in a way there's too much to say. I could talk for much longer than the 20 minutes I've been allocated. Should I assume the other students don't know much and give them a kind of general introduction? Or should I try and make them share my fascination with a particular aspect? You could do either, but you'll need to have it clear in your own mind. Then I think I'll give an overview. OK. Now, one way of approaching this is to work through developments in chronological order. Uh-huh. On the other hand, you could talk about the numerous ways that nanotechnology is being applied. You mean things like thin films on camera displays to make them water repellent and additives to make motorcycle helmets stronger and lighter? Exactly. Or another way would be to focus on its impact in one particular area, say medicine or space exploration. That would make it easier to focus. Perhaps I should do that. I think that would be a good idea. Right. How important is it to include slides in the presentation? They aren't essential by any means. And there's a danger of tailoring what you say to fit whatever slides you can find. While it can be good to include slides, you could end up spending too long looking for suitable ones. You might find it better to leave them out. I see. Another thing I was wondering about was how to start. I know presentations often begin with, first I'm going to talk about this, and then I'll talk about that. But I thought about asking the audience what they know about nanotechnology. That would be fine if you had an hour or two for the presentation, but you might find that you can't do anything with the answers you get, and it simply eats into the short time that's available. So maybe I should mention a particular way that nanotechnology is used to focus people's attention. That sounds sensible. What do you think I should do next? I really have to plan the presentation today and tomorrow. Well, initially, I think you should ignore all the notes you've made, take a small piece of paper and write a single short sentence that ties together the whole presentation. It can be something as simple as, nanotechnology is already improving our lives. Then start planning the content around that. You can always modify that sentence later if you need to. OK.
That is the end of section 4. You now have half a minute to check your answers.